Welcome back to the latest lecture session. In the last session, we started talking about different variations of activated sludge process. In that context, we looked at or uh, briefly discussed sequential batch reactor. This is something that is uh, now being widely adopted in India, right? Sequential batch. So, sequence in sequence, we have different batch reactors. What is a batch reactor? And uh, now, a uh, closed system that is continuously mixed or well steered let us say, but the key aspect is there is no flow coming in, no flow going out. So, it is a closed system. So, why do we say sequential batch? So, for the in the same tank which we are going to look at now, initially they will you know uh, pump in the not pump in fill the tank with waste water. So, they will keep filling it with waste water. So, once the relevant level has been reached they will stop the flow right and then what are they going to start they are going to start mixing and providing oxygen so you are going to have aeration so during this aeration you know the microbes are going to degrade the relevant uh, waste our waste and their substrate for their own uh, cell synthesis and energy requirements after this they are going to stop the aeration and now, what do you have? You have flocks. These microbes that we promoted by maintaining the right conditions and these flocks will settle down. So, in this case, you have settle. You will promote settling and afterwards, after some time, you will have all these or most of the flocks settle down with some filamentous microbial or microorganisms. So, you will have clear water at the top. This clear water you will remove right so decanting it's called decanting so each process more or less we can say is a batch reactor so sequential batch reactor right so that's something to uh, keep in mind again better efficiency and i think we talked about this earlier let's not go back there and then obviously lesser area requirements let's and again uh, looks like especially in india where you're not sure when the power is going to uh, you know be available and not uh, SBR is a better process because you have greater flexibility let us see right again we are going to look at the IIT Roorkee plant uh, let me directly switch over there so a brief overview so here we have the sump where all the wastewater is going to be collected by gravity it goes to the primary treatment here but in this primary treatment we are not looking at uh, sedimentation tanks or such to remove suspended solids we are only looking at core screens and grit removal right but again this is i think they're com calling it by a trade name so that's what we have it's not the typical primary treatment and after this primary treatment the flow is coming out here let's see so from sump and obviously this is at the lowest level and why is it at the lowest level in IIT Roorkee? The sewerage network flows by gravity as is the case in most other places by gravity. So, the end point will be pretty low and then as we discussed you will have pumping or uh, headworks or such and here we have a submerged uh, pump that is lifting the water up to this particular treatment uh, what do we say uh, unit here. Here we have the core screens and grit removal right and from here you are going to have the water going to these sequential batch reactors. We have two sequential batch reactors, ba reactor 1, reactor 2. And here you see, you know, some what do we say tanks out here. These are the bioselector tanks or bioselectors. Why or what is it that we are trying to do there? So, after this primary treatment, again in primary, let me not say primary, let me only call it preliminary treatment, you uh, have wastewater that is high strength, relatively high strength anyway. And we know that, you know, we want flock forming microbes to be formed, right. But again, high F by M, right, is when these flock forming microbes thrive. But if I let that stay through the entire uh, system, 
you are going to have pin flocks, you are going to have to achieve what do we say both kinds of filamentous, some filamentous and flock, right? And also you want to prevent the growth of nocardia type of microbes, right? So we want to create the conditions that lead to the growth of the kind of microbes that we want. So these are called the bioselector tanks. So what do we have? These tanks with high strength wastewater. So you have some sludge or microbes that are put in and they are aerated for some time, let us say 15 minutes, let us say, right. And so you have air, oxygen, so it is aeration, you know, you have aeration and aerobic conditions for most of the time. And then you have a lot of uh, food for the microbes and you have some microbes because you are putting in microbes too, we will look at that. So F by M is high in this particular bioselector tank. So the kind of microbes that thrive there are going to lead to rapid degradation or the kinetics are going to be faster and the kind of microbes that we want are typically going to thrive there, right. That is what happens in these bioselector tanks. You want the kind of microbes you want to prevail to grow. So that is why you are creating high F by M conditions in this tank. You cannot create that over the entire tank because then your effluent quality will be degraded, right. So, you are now having these bioselector tanks. After that, this water, right, which is already in contact with microbes will be released into your sequential batch reactor, right. So, let us go ahead and play this uh, video. You have two tanks, sequential batch reactors and then it goes to this disc filter, more or less a kind of uh, what do we say mechanism to remove any further suspended solids, disc filter. And then you have a UV lamp based disinfection system and then it goes to a particular underground uh, what do we say tank out here and these are the offices where you have the fully automated uh, I believe the SCADA system if I am not wrong to control this process. These are not manually operated. The level of oxygen and such you know which is key right is maintained you know via or uh, remotely let us say right. So, you can see the relevant uh, parameters and such. So, the underground tank I guess why do we use that because this water is recycled for the maintenance of IIT Roorkee lawns and such and the remaining water which cannot be used for IIT Roorkee lawns is discharged into the Ganga canal right. Ganga canal which goes for or which is the source of water for cities downstream of Roorkee. So, that is one aspect right okay and then what happens out here what else do we have. So, as we mentioned the sludge settles down until now we have not talked about it in detail but after the sludge settles down again you cannot throw it out onto the road. You have a lot of when we say sludge again it cells, microbial content cells right. If I just leave them out there without oxygen or food they are going to die and again septic conditions decaying and such right. So, you do not want that you want to be able to treat the sludge. But the issue with sludge is even though it is well thickened and has settled down you will still have considerable water content in it. So, without removing this water content if you try to degrade it the volume and the not just volume yeah, again because of the water that is there both volume and the weight will be high. So, transportation cost, treatment cost and so on will be high. So, you want to dewater the sludge or remove as much water as you can from these microbes let us say. So, here you are going to have sludge removed and brought out here where you have the dewatering system here right. And then we are going to have some uh, what we say stabilization or composting of the relevant sludge. That is a different aspect, but I guess that is what we see out here. Again, coming into the sump, right, preliminary treatment and grit removal, and then SBR, and the sludge from the SBR goes to this dewatering system. So, let me move on. Okay, now we have the uh, video which we were able to take, right. So, here we have the sump and the dewatering system. Right, let us just uh, look at what we have, okay. Here you see the wastewater flowing in, right, at a lower head, obviously, or lower elevation. That is what we saw earlier. And from that particular sump, uh, based on the or using the submerged pumps, the water is pumped up to this uh, unit where grit removal and uh, what do we say, removal of plastics and such takes place. Again, this is not the usual one that we see though, right. So, let us see what else we have out here. So, now we are looking at after what do we say the preliminary treatment, coarse screens and some grit removal, 
what do we have? We saw that the water is being pumped up to the bioselector tanks, right? Bioselector as in we want to have high FBIM conditions such that the kind of flock forming microbes that we want to thrive will be predominant later or even now, right? So that's what we want to achieve here. So aeration is not going to be continuous here though for 15 minutes or such high FBIM ratio, let's say, right? So that's what we have. The water is flowing into this bioselectors here. That's what you see. Right, and this is the sludge that is coming into these bioselector tanks. You see the sludge out here, yes, and this is the water coming in from the left into the bioselector tank, and this is the sludge coming in. This is not the actual, I mean, the SBR is coming later, but this is what uh, these are the bioselector tanks we have so that the kind of microbes that we want thrive. This is the sludge coming in, right, that is how sludge with microbes looks. And this is the wastewater within that tank. So, this is an SBR, an overview of the SBR tank, right? And the bioselector tanks are somewhere out here, let us see, okay? Somewhere out here, which we cannot see from this angle. From there, the water comes in, and here we are seeing the aeration phase. Again, the whole cycle is 4 hours. Obviously, we cannot look at the whole 4 hours. So, here I guess we have the uh, filling or okay filling was done and we have aeration. So, you see the aeration bubbles coming in, right? And this is the line for providing air and you see the air being pumped in, let us say. We will look at the kind of diffusers that they are using, but the air is being continuously pumped in aeration. So, we are providing the oxygen which is the electron acceptor so that the microbes which are in the sludge that we added here, right? So, that is why it is called return activated sludge, right? The microbes that are in the sludge that we added earlier or are uh, uh, adding will be able to use this oxygen and complete that redox process, let us say, right? So, that is what we have out here. This is a SBR tank. Again, we have tank number 1 here and tank number 2 is to our right hand side which is not visible in this angle, let us say, right? So, while aeration might be occurring here, decantation would probably be occurring in the other tank. So, let us move ahead. So, we have aeration just a close up view. So, you can see the color and again this is due to the MLSS mixed liquor suspended solids which has a lot of uh, microbes in it let us see right high microbial concentration. So, just after they stop the aeration you can see the kind of flocks that are being formed right. So, I guess just after we stop aeration or such this is what you see okay the shot here that we took was here you see wastewater near a dead zone, right? You can see the color and here you can see the MLSS or microbes and the wastewater on the left hand side, let us see, right? So, you can see that in a mom moment or so, we will be able to see the relevant flocks also. So, decanter which will come into play later once we are trying to remove this relevant uh, supernatant, right? So, this is when we stop the aeration, right after we stopped aeration or they rather, and you see these flocks, okay? This is a good angle. You can see the flocks, right? You can see these uh, flocks, all these are flocks, and you can see already, let us say, one centimeter of clear water above. So, these flocks are settling down by gravity now, right? So, it takes some time again, one hour, one and a half hour, or 45 minutes, uh, depending on the cycle that they have optimized. Again, you can see the flocks that are being formed in this aeration tank or the SBR system, let us see, right? first fill then aeration which we looked at and now settling down is taking place. See you can see the uh, flocks in a pretty decent manner, right? Okay, so this I guess right now this is the uh, earlier was the close up shot. This is the long view when you know the water is settling down, not water par pardon me the flocks or the sludge are settling down. Here settling is taking place let us see, right? Uh, let us move ahead. So, settling again from the top, it does not look like much, but obviously when we just stopped aeration and the flocks were at the surface, you could see the uh, difference acutely and over time the microbes are going to settle down or the sludge is going to settle down. After we provided enough time for these microbes or the sludge to settle down, right? Again, type 1, maybe not type 1, type 2 settling probably initially and then type 3 and 4. What are you going to have? You are going to have relatively clear water on the surface and that water is being decanted, decantation. The water at the top is being removed, let us say, right? So, that is what you have out here. This is decantation, 
right. So, you can still see gentle or quiescent conditions elsewhere and here you see the water being decanted. Again as I mentioned this is in one tank in the other SBR tank that we have you know probably aeration is taking place or filling is uh, going on decanter 1 and decanter 2 as I mentioned earlier again a long view. So, here you can see the two SBR units one here where I guess say decantation is taking place on the left as you can see you can see aeration is taking place there right did the two cycles keep going on in different tanks let us see. So, that is uh, this is one good shot for us to understand that you know cycles are going on, but they are not the same right they go in different times let us see right. So, here decantation and here aeration let us move on. So, here I wanted to demonstrate how sludge settles and also we did a minor trial to show uh, what is that what is going to happen if I add a electrolyte let us say so that I can neutralize the charge and form or promote uh, coagulation and thus flocculation. So, but first we are going to look at this particular uh, beaker. So, this was collected just before aeration was stopped from the aeration tank. So, here you see water and by the time we set up the shot already you see that the sludge has started to settle down. Sludge is nothing but the uh, microbes here that are degrading the relevant waste water here right. So, you can see the flocks here and relatively clear water at the top. This is real time now look at how it settles down right. I will just uh, stop commenting for some time and we will look at it real time. Here because the height of the uh, settling basin if I may call so is only a few centimeters. Uh, you will have maybe initially type 2 and then type 3 compression settling and type 4 settling 2, 3 and 4 visible at the same not same time occurring simultaneously I guess. But you can see within I think 30 seconds you see that the sludge has settled a considerable what do we say distance here right not distance height here. Again we did not add anything. So, when we stop aeration and just uh, look at or have settling this is what happens all the sludge or the microbes because they are now heavy lesser surface area per unit mass relatively heavier what do they do they form flocks and they settle down. Obviously, during that this time I do not want to provide air and mixing right or then they would not settle down I want to provide quiescent conditions. So, that is what we saw. So, in this trial I just for the uh, sake of uh, an experiment or for demonstration I asked the relevant engineer there to add a flocculant or an electrolyte there. So, that you can see how with the addition of the flocculant or the electrolyte the flock formation changes and how they th or how they differently settle. But again you do not add flocculant typically to sludge, but we just looked at the trial because we see this in or we come across flocculation coagulation and flocculation in the sedimentation tank ok. I guess this is a different angle, but soon they will add the flocculant ok. So, I guess it, this is from a different angle with uh, better camera and such, but here you can see the sludge blanket hopefully right. Again you could see the time it is again just 30 seconds which I uh, moved up and you can see the sludge blanket again type 2, 3, 4 and maybe now it is at 4 or 3 I guess right zone settling and, and now here they are adding the relevant electrolyte let us say or the uh, poly electrolyte or the coagulant not flocculant pardon me coagulant and you are mixing it. So, the charge is being neutralized if any charge if any, but again this need not be done we are just doing it for the sake of demonstration let us say charge is being neutralized gentle mixing right and all this is real time. And then we stop the uh, mixing ok this level of mixing is not required, but fine we stop the mixing already you see the change in flock size the flocks are now much bigger. And obviously, because they are bigger you can see that the flocks settle down uh, remarkably fast or have already settled down let us see right. So, you see that there is a considerable difference in the time required for water to be separated from the flocks especially because the flocks are 
uh, now bigger and most of the suspended particles too have been captured let us see right. So, that is something that you see right. Let me now take this forward. So, after sequential batch reactor or the last stage was decanting you are going to pump the water not pump the water out decant the water gently right. You do not want to disturb the uh, settled sludge or such which is being pumped out. So, what do we have? We still have some suspended solids as you can see. See even after the sludge has settled out, but again this is only 30 seconds typically we give 1 hour or so and the height is obviously 2 to 3 meters. So, you still have some suspended solids, but typically it will be much clearer after I let it stay for 1 hour. So, what is going to happen? I want to remove these suspended solids further. So, in this case they have a disc filter right. They have a disc filter. So, at that time it was under maintenance. So, water comes in and you have these discs out here right. Let me just switch to the video where we have the discs uh, being shown. So, here we have a disc filter in my hands ok. So, you see that this acts as a filter let us see yes. So, uh, the suspended particles are going to be trapped in that particular relevant filter. So, let us go back to where we were ok disc filter this is uh, rotating in general. So, the sediments are going to be trapped and clear water goes through after that obviously what do we have we want to kill the microbes if any that are harmful to us, but in general uh, the pathogen concentration is going to decrease because the pathogens cannot thrive in the system that we had or the kind of microbial community that we have in the SBR system, but still there will be some pathogens. So, you want to uh, what do we say inactivate them by UV or you can add chlorine, but chlorine will have its own issues. So, I would strongly suggest against chlorinating treated wastewater for the formation of due to the formation of carcinogenic uh, disinfection byproducts let us say. With UV you are going to damage the DNA or RNA of the cell and or the uh, microbe or the pathogen and affect its ability to replicate. So, you have this UV I guess uh, let us see UV here. So, it is a flow through system water comes in and goes through when it is not working I guess the bypass, but you know you have the UV lamps right I think submerged system and the water flows through it. So, UV lamp submerged and we also talked about the sludge right the sludge or the settled sludge right the microbes. So, what are we going to do with that? We need to also treat that. So, first you want to remove much more water from it. So, you have this dewatering equipment here and then the polyultralite is added to the settled sludge not to the whole water. So, we saw that polyultralite uh, what do we say addition there let us move on. So, polyultralite right is added so that the bigger flocks are formed and then you have the sludge going in uh, this is sludge now right the settled sludge and it is going through the dewatering equipment or machine. Let us see where or what else we have ok. This is the um, sludge that has to be dewatered as you can see it is not the typical waste water uh, it is sludge and you see that after ultralight the kind of flocks are different, but still there is enough water. So, it is coming in at the top it is going in like this as you can see it is a filter press filter press system right and you can see the water being removed I guess ok sequentially you see less and less uh, water in the system, but let us look at the filter cake ok. Here you can see the outlet after dewatering this is the you know sludge or the microbes here right. You can now see the uh, dewatered sludge that is coming out of the filtered press. So, obviously now the volume and also because I removed the water the mass is going to be less and it is relatively easy for me to treat or uh, transport and then treat this right. So, typically anaerobic digestion, but because it is a small plant in IIT Roorkee anaerobic digestion is not really required. So, let me also look at the kind of let me also look at or show you the kind of diffuser that uh, they are using here right. So, what do we see out here? We see this is the diffuser right air comes in through this it is not deep you know it is not uh, entirely you know the air does not go through the entire system. I guess you know the block is somewhere out here and it passes through this diffusion membranes let us see of these membranes or diffusers pardon me right. And I think you can see the small holes somewhere here if I hold it you can see the holes and through this the air will come out let us see the 
thus uh, why do we want to do that in the first case obviously because we want to have smaller air bubbles we talked about actual oxygen transfer efficiency and so on and so forth the whole point is to convert the oxygen in the air such that it changes phase from the gaseous phase to the aqueous phase we want dissolved oxygen for the microbes so obviously uh, lesser the size of the bubble the greater the surface area right and then the greater the mass transfer of oxygen so that is why we have such systems let us see right so I guess that is uh, hopefully visible now right ok so with that I will end uh, today's session again it is sequential batch reactor the kinetics are uh, better because it will allow me to have a greater average rate of uh, removal of the waste and as we see you know even with respect to different flows I can vary the relevant levels even without an equalization tanks tank as you see in this case we had no equalization tank but again because it is a gated community with 15,000 people or so you might not really need it if you size your SBR well right and we looked at how you know sludge is formed how sludge is uh, not sludge microbes are formed and how the MLSS looks like if I may say so how the sludge is settling it settled very well but something we looked at and how the water is decanted and how uh, the sludge is also dewatered right so with that I will end uh, today's session thank you for your patience